Good evening. I'm Eric Hackley, and this is Hackonomics. Tonight, we're going to talk about our mindset, how to control our mindset as opposed to letting our mindset control us. I'll be having three different guests that will be talking about this in different perspectives, but the whole thing is based on how we are conditioned in, in society to do different things. The first segment, I'll be joined by Miss Yolanda Naylor. Yolanda, welcome to the show here. Thank you for having and me. And that silhouette that we just saw on the screen was her talking. And she gave a fantastic presentation that had everybody sitting on the edge of their seats because as she's talking about the south side of Fort Wayne and kind of showing uh, that things are killing us. It's almost, I'm, I, there's no conspiracy against people living on the south side, but you have evidence that could prove the opposite. How did you find out that um, there's so many fast food places on the south side versus north side? There, there are uh, fewer health-oriented places, uh, places for counseling about nutrition. How did you get into that to make that observation? Um, what I noticed is um, I became uh, overweight. At one point I weighed uh, 250 pounds. I uh, have asthma, COPD, and I have no cartilage in my knees. I'm just bone on bone there, and so I had knee issues. Um, but before I uh, blamed asthma and bad knees for a lot of my ailments, I said, let me do start doing what's right for my body, not putting bad things in there and expecting it to perform. And so when I uh, started to um, eat healthier, I realized uh, the community that I lived in, a lot of time you hear of a food desert, but I noticed it was actually, I consider a wellness desert because not only could you not get fresh fro uh, produce, within a five or 10 mile radius of um, certain area codes in the inner city, 46806, 46807, 46816, and so forth. Um, you also could not get um, you know, vitamins, supplements, um, any nut fundamental nutritional advice that you may need. Um, so once I just start noticing um, what was available to me within five or 10 miles, I noticed it was uh, extremely limited. Um, but then when I um, would travel out to the north <coughs> part of town, I noticed that within a mile or two radius, you had um, three to four fitness centers. You had um, herb, uh, herb and vitamin places. Um, that, and also that was the case on the west side of town as well. You know, you have places like Curves, Anytime Fit. You have a Y that, uh, uh, with state-of-the-art equipment. Um, but and so forth. You're going pretty fast. You, you covered a whole lot of uh, territory there. Okay. You know, you mentioned that you got asthma. How did you get asthma? I mean, what happened there? You know, uh, a lot of the smoking regulations that we have now, um, we didn't have uh, 40 years ago with um, the effects, I believe, of secondhand smoke. And so, you know, I grew up in a, a secondhand <coughs> smoke environment. I believe that was one of the things. And plus, I've had some, uh, um, I've worked in some challenging environments that possibly could have contributed to my asthma as well. So your approach to wellness or, is that what led you to form the Transitional Health, um, that's uh, your company, Transitional Health. Well, now you go around giving seminars, correct? Um, yes, I, I will, I do whatever is necessary to help people that are serious and aren't um, still in a, a situation where they want to make con uh, excuses that they want to take <coughs> responsibility for their health. So I'll do whatever necessary if they need me to come speak to a larger group or if I need to do just one-on-one -on -one because we're not a cookie cutter program. Everyone's situation, nutritional, advi uh, nutritional uh, vices and also physical limitations are different. But are different, you know, Looking at, looking at the south side, you know, um, um, people are getting fat mm -hmm. and blacks are suffering from certain diseases that are, are the result of a lot of uh, fried foods and a lot of bad foods, a lot of uh, cheap foods Correct. and things like that. 
But, you know, a lot of times we don't realize that because we watch TV and we watch the commercials mm -hmm. and things look so good, you know, on TV. And going back to the mindset thing again, we're kind of conditioned. I mean, we see that pretty fried chicken. We want some chicken or the hamburgers. You know, how did you, what do you tell people? How, how do you rewire your mindset to kind of push those things away? Well, you have to ask yourself, um, one, you have to take control of your, your surroundings and um, your health. And, that, and, uh, and by that, you just have to make better decisions. You don't really need a personal trainer or a nutritionist to tell you how to eat. If I give you a quick survey, uh, qu uh, quiz right now, fried or baked, which one? Oh, I'm already baked. Okay, water or soda? Water. Okay, apple or chips? And that's a close one, but apples. Oh, uh, <laughs> not close at all. But yes, yeah, so we basically know what to do. It's time to really find out what's important enough to us to make the changes that we need to make. Um, I was just discussing earlier that um, the best uh, gift a child can give to a parent and a parent can give to a child is to be as healthy as they can as long as they can. It totally defeats the purpose to invest in our, our, our children's education and wanting, and, and wanting them to go on and do great things when we're sabotaging ourselves by fork and knife and then they're going to be hindered because they're not going to want to go off and be productive if they're, they're worried about mom and dad because they suffer from hypertension because they can't say no to, you know, rib tips and ribs or, um, or bacon or they're suffering from um, heart disease because they have to have that, you know, that, that steak or they're suffering from um, diabetes because they won't stop, you know, the sodas and the candies and the sweets and so forth. But, you know, those, you know, Pepsi, Coke, uh, McDonald's, uh, Arby's, everybody, they put so much money into market research. That is correct. And they know more about you than what you know about you. That's correct. And they hit you at those moments when you're not thinking, where it's just an impulse. Um, I got treated for my birthday recently. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'll have some ribs, not thinking that it's pork. And I went through all them ribs to the last one. I said, oh, this is pork. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, um, it's hard to keep that in your, in, your, in your conscious mind. And then as time goes on, and since we're creatures of our habits, then all of a sudden we got something. Right. Um, I, I understand that. And, that. and just whether it's nutrition or anything, you know, to make our community stronger. We have to stop so much mindless thinking. We have to live purposeful. You know, we have to have goals that we have to keep at the forefront, you know, and then that will eliminate a lot of those things. You mean weight goals and things like that? What do you just, mean? Just goals in life, you know. If you have a goal to accomplish something in your education with your nutrition, that should always be at the forefront. And so therefore, when you're spending times or doing something, it's either going to work for, towards your goal or it's going to work against your goal. But as you're setting these goals that are health oriented mm -hmm. or to, doing, to do things more productive in your life, you are fighting uh, an unfair battle. I mean, you might think that this is healthy because it has less calories or no sugar and you find out that it's worse for you. Tell us about how this high fructose corn syrup, how that, what that's doing to us. Um, it's creating a lot of um, obesity. Um, a lot of people now, we're drinking our calories rather than eating them. It's causing a, it's a cause of a lot of diabetes and, and uh, other ailments that are, are uh, preventable. What I, what I recommend, though, is not to complicate it with, you know, all the ads or the information about high fructose corn syrup or um, genetically modified products or, or gluten. I, I believe in keeping it simple and that's going back to the basics. And when you look at your food, you ask yourself, is there anything on this plate that my body can use? You know, and what happens is, I hate to be blunt, but like my trainer um, and my nutrition and mentor, mentor told me, the fat I see is the fat I eat. So if I'm looking, if I'm eating what God placed on this earth for me to eat, 
you know, am I perfect now? Absolutely not. It's still a process for me, but I do this because I understand the struggle and I and that's how I lost over 70 pounds is eating foods that my body can eat. If it has a commercial, it's likely not good for you. If it has a coupon, it's likely I mean, not good for you. But like right now, mm -hmm. well, not not yet, but you can go into the store. Right. And here's these ears of corn for a dime or 15 cents a piece. Genetically modified. And mm -hmm. but you're not thinking that. Right. And, and uh, you start eating them ears of corn, mm -hmm. and you pick up weight like that that you can't get rid of. I mean, how do you know? Uh, I mean. What, what's so interesting about that is I found that certain countries have outlawed certain foods that we can that we eat here right can you elaborate on that and, and, and again you're going back to processed foods where okay. again if we keep it simple which <laughs> with sticking with fresh produce and vegetables and drinking water we won't have to worry about a lot of the, the additives and preservatives so that means no sausage. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to hurt. Yeah. And I already know what hot dogs is. I read that you can't eat more than one hot dog a week or something like that before you definitely develop certain things. Mm -hmm. um, how have you, you know, what, how long does it take? How long did it take you to reformulate your habits to? lose weight or, or to become more conscious about everything that, that you're doing because a lot of us do make things complicated we, we overthink things i'm guilty right. of that mm -hmm. and uh but it's got to be a, a simple um i mean how, how do you do that i mean how do you reorient yourself to get in line one i'm a believer so i started with prayer and i asked uh, god to relinquish a lot of those vices that i had and then I started one, one day at a time. The issue, a lot of time, people go intensity rather than consistency. And, um, and we fail to really have a true understanding on how to set goals. So a lot of times when people want to set health goals, they start with multiple pounds. I, I attend Tabernacle Baptist Church where the pastor is gone. He's <laughs> not but, afraid to let me step you keep going. Into okay. destiny. They He's start. not afraid to let the children they start okay. with uh, multiple, they start with wanting to lose multiple pounds when they need to just start with concentrating on losing one. And with a goal, they have to learn to set many goals. There's no sense like, am I, you know, a mini goal versus a short term goal and a long term goal? Um, because if you can't, if you're setting a goal to lose a certain amount of weight or, or become healthier uh, in a week or two weeks, and you can't get till noon and not, uh, and not hit the vending machine or a drive through then you need to back up and take it you know one day one day and one um, at a time so the first thing is uh pray over it and the second one is really become proficient at knowing how to set a goal and being consistent rather than um, in, um intensity and you don't drink milk right i do i limit my my milk Yes, very much so. And okay, no pork. And do you eat do you eat shellfish? Um, no, <laughs> no. So, you know, as you wind down here, you know, so what kind of people do you talk to, or how can a person contact you to find out uh, how to create a path, you know, for more of a healthier eating lifestyle? How do you help people with that? quickly here um, one will um, contact me <coughs> you can contact me by Facebook or you can go to my website uh, transitionalhealth.org and there's a contact form on there um, then once you or email is Yolanda at transitionalhealth.org and once you contact me we'll just have a real a conversation find out what your vices are find out what's the makeup of your day um, you know where you may be falling falling short and then we'll go from there and a person who is overweight can lose weight and get off high blood pressure medication? That's not racial? I mean, that, help, that works for every, everyone? No, I'm definitely not going to. I'm definitely not mm -hmm. going to say that. I'm, uh, but I'm definitely saying that if you, um, you eat clean. Anybody can lose weight? Yes. Yes, sir. 
you know, and that, I would debate with you at some point on that because I have been trying, and I spend a lot of time behind the computer, and it's, and and uh, I'm not eating that many chips. See, that's that word, try. Yes, I'll. You, I'll you, you, you're, you're either doing it or you're not. Okay. So last thing, you know, mm -hmm. I, so I guess that's basically what you tell people who are stubborn and uh, who are convinced <laughs> that what you're saying that doesn't work for them. R really what I try to get people to, tr like you said, this is about changing a mindset and, and really finding um, value and finding uh, a why, why, why they um, should do it. Because going to the doctor a lot of times and doctors saying, you know, you need to stop smoking, you need to lose weight, that isn't always the pivotal point. So we have to find out what's the pivotal point. Do you want to be a better Christian and, and take better care of your Bible? I mean, a, a better care of your temple? Do you want to be a, a better parent and grandparent to see them around and not have them have to take care of you later? You know, um, do you want to be a better spouse and, and, and not have those extra burdens that you may have? Because it's, it's not a matter of if these things are going to happen. It's just a matter of when. And just keeping it simple is, say it again, please. Uh, keeping it simple is, you know, stick to eating foods your body can use. Um, fresh produce, um, fruits, vegetables, and uh, increasing your water intake and exercise. Okay. Well, Yolanda, uh, hopefully when you come back on the show again, I'll be about 10 or 15 pounds uh, smaller. I, I just ask, just start with one. It, 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 if you can't do the one, you can't, you know, it's going to be very challenging to get to the 10 or 15. Uh, I've learned a lot. And again, this is a live call-in show. And if you have any questions to our guest, the number, I believe, is, is appearing on the screen. So as we get ready to transition to our next guest, because we see that even I suffer uh, from a, um, a mindset that I'm trying to work on and change, and we're going to stick with the mindset, but we're going to talk about a different aspect of the mindset. So let's go ahead and run our clip here, and we'll be joined by our next guest here shortly.